That drop goal, dying seconds of a game. And it's such a skill, isn't it? Just being really, really on the ball, really organised, really disciplined to execute that drop goal. So it, it's a pretty good team you've got here. I'll act as commentator. Can we just kind of talk us through how it all works? Babes, you're the only forward here. So cool. you're going to kind of act as the entire pack. Brian, you can <laughs> be the uh, defence. I'll defend, yeah. Yeah, you can be defence. Uh, Oz, you're going to be the talkative nine. You'll fit that role quite well. And Reese, uh, you can be the star role uh, at 10. So, Babes, what are the pack thinking? They know what's on, the call's been made, clock's counting down. What's going on? Well, this is very much something that they would have practised again and again on the training field in pressure situations. When they've been training, they're tired. Bang, we've got to do this again. Get the ball, move it upfield, and make sure that you deliver it to the scrum half <laughs> when he wants it. You want to play on the insecurities of the opposition because they know if they give a penalty away, it's a guaranteed three points. So they're going to force you to do, go for the drop goal if they can't get the ball off you and they want to put you in the worst position possible. So a lot of communication in the pack, make sure it moves in the right direction, but the guy who drives it is the scrum half. So Oz, you're directing the pack, are Absolutely, you? You're looking yeah. for the right spot. And it depends what type of scrum half you are, you know. If you're a Matt Dawson, then you're going to be looking around this area here and thinking, right, I can probably score myself and try and go through the channel there. <laughs> you know, but if you've got respect, and you know, you know that the 10 has got the ability to kick, you're going to trust him and you're going to make sure that the pass is put exactly on the spot. In that scenario there, you're looking at Reese. If you can move away from Reese a little bit because you're a commentator, you shouldn't be on the pitch. <laughs> I'll go over here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what you're trying to do is you're trying to get him on his right foot. You're trying to send the ball out there with a gentle pass so he doesn't have to move. And that'll be easy for me, but not so easy for other nines around the world. So that's what I'm looking for at nine. And, Brian, you're the defensive line. What position are you in at this stage? What are you looking for? So the most likely uh, defensive player here to block uh, a drop goal is probably a back rower or a nine. Now, what the nine is probably looking at is Austin when he has his hands on the ball. And sometimes nines sit in the second line covering chips, but on this occasion, they're going to try and time their run so they actually get a running start to, ha to make sure that they can get to the 10 and at least put, in, put them off in some, in some capacity. Now, the big thing is, where is the kick going to take place from? So when Austin throws the ball to Reese, he's not actually going to kick it from that spot. He's actually going to move to his favoured foot. Unless you're playing against, jo against Johnny Wilkinson, no offence, doesn't really matter which <laughs> foot you know, he's, he goes to. So Reese is a right footer. He's likely to go for a right footer drop goal unless he gets absolutely stuck. The space he is going to kick it is actually to the right of where he is currently standing. So rather than run directly at him, I want to run at that space that he's going to be stepping into. So if you throw the pass, Oz, I know it's, I know it's going to be there. <laughs> it's not where he's received the pass. The other thing is, there's no point in flailing with the arms up high. The last two or three metres is the most important spot to accelerate into the hit and launch your body. Trying to get hands to protect the face. No one wants this. The moneymaker um, <laughs> mangled. Um, certainly not if you have a new nose. So um, trying to launch yourself with the hands protecting the face. And it's body on the line stuff, you know, when you're a point or two up with... The, the clock on red. So, Reese, the pack have done their job. OK, the ball is sitting at the back of the rook. It's all set to go. Do you make a call? Is it a signal? When do you decide it's ready to pull the trigger? Obviously, Brian spoke about there, trying to put pressure on the 10. And um, ideally, from an attack point of view, you want them to have the defence. I have as much doubt in their mind as possible. So, for, for me, I'd like to have some forwards here so the defence aren't sure whether it's going back to 10, whether they're going to hit the forwards or not. And um, you're probably better off drop going off front football because... For a 10, there's nothing worse to be stood in the pocket. You're looking up, there's five guys coming to charge you down, and that's when you're ultimately going to panic and try and, fluster, and you get flustered. So, for me, I'd like to have maybe one phase, get the forwards around the corner again, and then give a call to the nine to pull it back behind the forwards, and then pray to God it goes over. You know what everyone wants here? You want this to happen, don't you? Yeah, yeah you want this to happen. OK, boys, play the play. Off you go. Aim at Brian's face. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey. And give the pass at the same time as the collision happens so he's taken out of the game.